Hey folks, David Stewart here. Hope you guys are having a tremendous day. I want to talk a little bit more about retro gaming. Specifically, what kind of hardware can you acquire or what kind of hardware in some cases do you already have sitting around that you can use to play retro games, that you can use to access this tremendously huge back catalog of games that are maybe not new, but are still a lot of fun in 2021 or whatever year you maybe happen to be watching this if you're watching in the future. In some cases, these games have held up not just for years, but for decades and are still really fun to play. And I think in a lot of cases are more fun than modern games. So hardware. The first one I'm going to mention is actually original hardware. This is a Model 2 Sega Genesis, otherwise known as the Mega Drive, depending on what region you grew up in. These are not that expensive to acquire. Now, I had this one when I was a kid. This is my Genesis that I used in the 1990s, and I held on to all my old hardware. If you're younger and you're looking to get into the hobby, this is really what this video is for. Original hardware is often not the best choice. There's a couple of reasons. There's two big ones. So the first big reason is that these don't play that well with modern displays. So if you're going to be playing the games on a modern, you know, big screen LCD TV or OLED TV or whatever cool TV you happen to have in HD and 4K, well, these don't play that nice with it. You can get very blurry upscaling. You may have to run by an external upscaler that can be very expensive, something like a RetroTink or a FrameMeister, in order to get a, a crisper, more accurate image onto your uh, newer display, displaying in HDMI. It can be expensive. Those, those extra pieces of hardware are sometimes several hundred dollars um, in order to use. And even then, you may not be getting the full experience. So the other option would be to hook your retro consoles up to a CRT TV, which is a big, bulky, heavy thing that you have to find a place for. Um, but I like playing on original hardware. I know a lot of other people that like playing on original hardware. It's something special about playing on the actual computer, no emulation, especially with Genesis. The emulators just don't emulate the sound correctly. Original hardware is like the hobby element of retro gaming, collecting original hardware, collecting the original games, um, playing them maybe on a CRT or, or using uh, other equipment to emulate uh, the look and the feel of those older TVs and what it was like to play these in the 1990s. The second reason that these are problematic is the games. The games can be very expensive. I have a friend on Twitter who mentioned that he bought uh, Castlevania Bloodlines, which is one of my favorite Castlevania games. I have it for, um, I have it for the Genesis for around $100 US. I think he bought it in Japan, so you're looking at you know the equ regional equivalent, whatever it was going to be, um, you know, ten thousand yen or, or whatever it is. So uh, that really is the same price as it was when it was new, if you in if you account for inflation. Well, hundred dollars for one game is rather pricey. People are complaining that they're seventy dollar games on the PS5, and those are like hundred million dollar super expensive games. So buying the original games can be expensive. While the original hardware is actually really easy to acquire, you could probably get uh, find one of these at a garage sale and buy it for like thirty dollars or something, or buy it on on eBay for a very inexpensive price. There's a ton of these old consoles sitting around, and a lot of them still work. Um, but the games, the games are harder to acquire and they can be more expensive depending on the rarity of the game. However, there's lots of other ways to access those games. And I don't just mean like downloading ROMs. I mean, you can buy them on other platforms because Konami and all of these companies will uh, actually put out their retro games on newer consoles. And so that's going to lead me to transition away from this. And by the way, a lot of times these break down. They're not making these anymore. So if you're a collector that likes to have them and likes to play them on a TV, that's that's one way to access it. And it is special, but it's not the ideal way for a lot of people. So the next one I want to talk about is one that you might already have, which is the Nintendo Switch. Now, the reason this is great for retro gaming is that uh, Nintendo historically has been very, very good about 
um, retro games on their platform, starting with the Wii and the virtual consoles where they were selling Genesis games and SNES games and Nintendo games and Game Boy games and Game Boy Color games and Game Boy Advance games. They were selling all of these uh, past system games on the Wii and you could buy them and download them and play them on your um, on your TV. In a lot of cases, you were playing them on a CRT because the Wii was really at the very end of the CRT era. Um, we had, when, when we bought it, uh, I shouldn't say we, my roommate bought one um, and we had it hooked up to our CRT in our little house that we rented and it looked great the old games looked great we were super excited to play like uh, you know buy Super Nintendo games that we couldn't find anymore in the early 2000s well they've taken that forward here if you are uh, if you have the Nintendo switch online subscription you have a huge catalog of, of Super Nintendo games uh, that you can play that are just all there and are ready to go. You also have NES games. I guess there's another tier that includes like some Genesis games and stuff like that. Um, and you can even play them with a nice little CRT filter. They look really good on, on the screen and they look really good on the TV as well. It's already been managed for you. You don't have to do any kind of work like what I'm gonna talk about with some of the later systems. So if you have a Nintendo Switch, it's a great way to access a ton of retro games. Other companies will also put out their retro games on the Nintendo Switch. You can get all the original Dragon Quest games for the Nintendo Switch. You can get um, the Mega Man games. There's Mega Man collections. So you can get the 8-bit and 16-bit, in some cases 32-bit Mega Man games. Um, there's just a huge number of games available for the Switch that haven't been available for other platforms before. And I know that a lot of companies, when they're looking to port their back catalog, they're looking at the Switch. Huge installed user base, which means a lot of opportunity to sell your back catalog of games. So if you're looking to acquire older retro games legally and everything, the Nintendo Switch is actually a really good option. You might already have one. You may just not have thought about looking through all those back catalogs of games and finding something that you really want uh, want to play. So really, really good option actually is the Nintendo Switch. And, and you can see I'm using some aftermarket uh, Joy-Con editions there because I like big buttons that feel good. Okay, uh, next one we're going to be moving into a little bit more, you know, obscure. Going to have to do a little bit more work. The next one is actually a phone, which you probably already have. And if you have a Samsung phone, which this is, so I'm so, you can tell I like blue phones. You might have an old phone sitting around, and. Uh, if it has a USB-C port and can output video over that USB-C port, you can actually hook that phone up to a TV with a Nintendo Switch dock. You can buy a Nintendo Switch dock, an aftermarket one will work fine, or any kind of, uh, I have one right here, any kind of like USB-C um, to HDMI thing that has also has a charger in. This will work for your Samsung phone or for any phone that has that, that video over, over USB-C to hook it up to your TV. And then of course you can pair it with uh, any controller, you can use a, a Bluetooth, you know, Bluetooth Xbox controller. You can play it like that. If you want to go portable, you can plug it in your TV and use it as a wireless controller. You can install RetroArch on an Android device. I haven't messed around with iOS, but some of this will apply to iOS. Just keep that in mind. Um, so you can install RetroArch on your phone pretty easily and uh, it's pretty easy to you know copy games onto your SD card or whatever um, whatever you're using or to just copy them directly onto your phone and then you can play that huge back catalog of ROMs uh, your phone is plenty powerful to play virtually all of the old emulator systems these emulators originally were were coming out of like Pentium 3s from 20 years ago so your phone has plenty of overhead for them I've tested everything up through like PS1 on my phone and it all works pretty good. I've heard of people getting, you know, um, more advanced emulators to run on Android devices. So an Android device is actually a really good option. The other thing is there's actually a lot of retro games for sale on the Google Play Store, um, but people aren't often searching for them because instead they're playing like, you know, the latest gotcha, whatever game. Uh, but you can buy like the Sonic games. There's Android ports of Sonic games and various other kinds of games that you can buy. You can buy Knights of the Old Republic on your phone. Um, I did a video on a bunch of Android games that you could play right now that are classic games which are really good. One of them is Knights of the Old Republic. You can play Morrowind on your phone. Uh, so there's lots of options for great games to play on your phone that are retro games that are still really good 
and you can buy legally or you can take your old ROMs if you are like me and you have a big catalog of games and put them on um, on your phone and play them that way. And you can even play them through the TV. Uh, there's even a, a desktop mode on Android devices, uh, at least on um, Samsung devices called Dex, Samsung Dex, that is like a desktop environment, makes it really easy to do all of this stuff and run it in full screen. Um, so that's a, an option that you may already have, like an extra phone sitting in a, in a drawer. Maybe you've upgraded to like the newest, fanciest phone and you have an older phone sitting around. Well, you can just use that. You can set it up specifically for uh, playing retro games and just enjoy it. You know, I've, I've thought about kind of stripping this phone down and, and just setting that up with some games to, you know, that way I could like hand it to my son or whatever. If he wants to play some Mario games, he could play that uh, on the phone. It's actually a really good option. And paired with a controller, it can be very portable. Not as portable as what I'm going to talk about next, but uh, still very, very portable. So um, the next option that I'll talk about, actually I'll talk about portable stuff next, is mini console. This is hardly a mini console, right? I've seen this sitting in the back. So this is the Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro. To me, it's in the it's in the catalog of all-in-one mini consoles that have been coming out over the last couple of years. Uh, there was the NES Mini, which was hard to acquire. There was the SNES Mini, which was also hard to acquire because Nintendo was like, we're only going to make them for one year, um, which makes them, you know, they're, they're still around. You can still get them. Uh, but for the price that you're usually buying these for, which is often about $100 US, you actually get a lot. So first of all, you get a, a piece of hardware. It comes installed with all the games that, you know, you can basically legally own those games at that point because it comes with them. And you can hack them to really open up their potential and install more stuff on them if you want. Now, I like this one, the Neo Geo, for a bunch of reasons. So first of all, it's got that clicky stick and it has arcade style buttons. Now, these are not the same, quite the same as the buttons from the arcade cabinets, the SNK cabinets, but you can switch these out. Like uh, new buttons are like often just $5 a piece. So if you wanted to switch out some of the buttons or all of them, uh, you could. And you can even switch out the, the stick here or even the switches, but um, I like it pretty much stock. I think it, it it emulates the arcade experience enough. You can plug it into a TV. And what's great about this guy is that it's also a controller. So I can plug it into my PC, which is another thing that you could play retro games on. You're watching it right now as your PC. Um, you can plug it into, I have a, a thing called a game link. I can plug it into my Nintendo Switch play like I have the Street Fighter arcade collection so I could play it with an arcade stick feels great or I can plug it into uh, my PlayStation and use it that way it, and it's very compatible uh, actually um, when you use that game link and it even has extra controller slots if you get those Neo Geo controllers you can play two or three players which I've done with my uh, with my son plenty of times I've had a ton of fun with this retro console and uh, it's been just a, a really good buy and you can also run a number of hacks for this one same thing with like the, the PS1 Classic, the NES Classic, the Genesis Classic, these classic mini consoles. Um, you can run hacks on them because they're, you know, a lot of cases they're just like a like a Raspberry Pi, you know. It's it's pretty simple and, and there's guys out there who love to tinker with this stuff. So you can, in some cases, just download a hack. You don't have to do really any work. And then you can open up the system and install more emulators on it, install more games. I have a MAME emulator on this in case I want to play an arcade game or something like that. And of course it comes with a ton of original SNK arcade games. So it, it's a great way to emulate that experience. And I love to buy this because going back to the original hardware thing, Neo Geo is still very expensive. When I was a kid, Neo Geo was like the most expensive thing ever. If you had a Neo Geo, you were pretty much the coolest kid in school. Cause it was like a $600 system or something. It was ridiculous. And it had these big joystick controllers and the games were $100 a piece back in the 1990s. And they haven't gotten cheaper. So you can get an AES. You're still going to pay a lot of money for a good a good condition AES, Advanced Entertainment System. And then to buy the controllers with clicky sticks that aren't worn out, with the buttons that haven't been destroyed. Then you're paying $100, $200, sometimes multiple hundreds of dollars for the, the giant cartridges that went in that. Because what it basically was was an arcade board that they just put into a little case and put a video out on it, you know. Oh, hook that up to your TV. And it was. It was like an arcade experience. So my favorite in Neo Geo games, um, I could play on this, like all the Metal Slug games, those kinds of things. Um, so I really loved being able to play this and like go back and actually 
have access to those great arcade games, have access to those AES games, which to buy on original hardware is ridiculously expensive. It's not, it's really for somebody who has a collecting hobby that wants to collect AES games because they can be very expensive, particularly if you're trying to get them like, you know, complete in box or something like that. We've had a big upsurge in the cost of uh, original hardware games for retro consoles. I don't see, I see that coming back at a certain point, like coming back down, but this is a really good option for somebody who doesn't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to access uh, Neo Geo games. So mini consoles are a great one. And especially when you hack them and you open them up, boy, you can do a whole lot with them. That's really going to bring me to uh, the next area of things that I want to talk about, which is older consoles, which you can still acquire and acquire fairly cheaply which you can then hack if you want to unlock the full potential and uh, increase their access to games. So the first one I'll really talk about, I didn't feel like bringing the whole thing in, PS3. Um, specifically the PS3 Fat model. The PS3 Fat model, the original, um, the serial numbers that start with A and the serial numbers that start with B have like 99% compatibility with PS2 and PS1 games. All PS3s will play PS1 games, by the way, which actually makes them a great option if you're looking to just play PS1 games. It'll upscale them to you know, HD resolution and will play them all pretty much flawlessly. It does those, the newer PS, um, PS3 ones just do PS1, but if you buy the launch model, which I have, um, they're really easy to upgrade. It came with a whopping 60 gig hard drive. And then I think the B serial number came with a 20 gigabyte hard drive. And at the time that was, that was substantial. That was, you know, oh, I, I could put some games on that. Well, now that's small, but you can buy a 500, uh, 500 gig SSD for like $40 now. So you can just pop that right into your PS3 and get rid of all your load times. But for the, the PlayStation 3, you could play PS1, PS2, PS3 games, the original games, and they're still pretty cheap. They've gone up in price, but you can get PS3 games for like a couple dollars. They're really cheap. You can get PS2 games. There's so many of them. The PlayStation 2 is the most popular console ever. So there's tons of games around. You can buy them off of eBay. You can buy them at garage sales and, and throw them in your PS3 and play them and PS1 games. And if you hack your PS3, you can put RetroArch, which is um, a big front end for a bunch of different em emulators. You can put that on your PS3. You can, uh, which means you can emulate, you know, all the all the older games. You can run games off your hard drive. You can rip them and run them off a hard drive and do things like that. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hackable system even now. It's an end of life system. And the last thing is that you can buy lots of games for the PS3 uh, if you can't find the original disc. In some cases, the original discs are very expensive, like very prohibitively expensive. Um, sometimes, you know, hundreds of dollars to buy the original disc for a certain PS1 game. But the digital game is available still on the PlayStation Store. They haven't shut it down yet. Same thing with the PlayStation Vita, which I'll talk about in a second. So you can buy the digital copy of a lot of these very popular, more sought after games for five or ten dollars download it to your ps3 and play it so the ps3 in 2021 is a, actually a great retro gaming device they have a huge catalog of ps1 classics including uh you know pretty much all the all the favorite games from the playstation one era that you can buy and download and play uh, without ever having to go acquire some original disc but if you have the original disc and you have the fat model you can play it and if you have any model of ps3 you can play ps1 games off of disc um, if you like. So the PS3 is a really good option there. Um, now getting into stuff that I think for the full potential requires a little bit of hacking. Uh, the first one, I'm not sure which one I should talk about first because these are some of my favorites. Um, let's talk about this one. I didn't bring in my whole Wii U, but the Wii U, another Nintendo console. So the Wii U is not that hard to hack. You can look up hacking guides for the Wii U. It's a great system. It's one of my favorites. Um, and there's still a ton of virtual console games available for the Wii U that uh, you can get. So there's a lot of stuff that you can still buy for the Wii U. The shop is still open as far as I know. Um, it's not that hard to hack the Wii U and put RetroArch or a variety of, of other emulators on it um, to run your older games. And it runs, it has its own built-in emulators that will run, you know, all the old, all the old games for Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, things like that. 
it will play all the Wii U games. It will play all the um, Wii games. So if you get those discs, it'll just play those. Uh, Wii U games, a lot of them are available for Switch. So, you know, if you have a Wii U, you can get them usually cheaper for the Wii U. Wii U games are very cheap. Uh, Wii games are very cheap because there were so many of them made. And if you do a little bit of hacking with your virtual Wii and you install, I think it's called, um, I'm trying to remember what it's called. You can play GameCube games. You can play rips of GameCube games. The, the disk drive will actually not read a GameCube game, unfortunately. But the ability to play GameCube games is actually built into the virtual Wii there. And you can get a tap to hook in your uh, GameCube controllers and play GameCube games on your Wii U. So you have a lot of compatibility, three generations of compatibility with a little bit of work, plus all the virtual console stuff and uh, RetroArch and whatever emulators you want to install on it when you hack it. And it's not that hard to hack. And they're pretty cheap to acquire. So that's another good option. I'm a big fan of the Wii U. I thought it was a great system for its time, a little bit underappreciated, but anyway. Now the next one, the th mighty 3DS. What's cool about the 3DS, besides the fact that it, you know, it, that it's in like 3D, is that you know, there's lots of games available for it that are great, but you can also um, just acquire a bunch of uh, games from the store, just like with the the Wii U, you can get a lot of classic retro games. You can hack this and install RetroArch on it. Um, I hacked it in a lot of cases to rip my games to the SD card that's on here uh, because my son was like losing the 3DS games and I have a big collection of 3DS games. Um, you can <clears throat> also run a flash cart and play a huge number of uh, back catalog of games just using a flash cart, using an R4 flash cart, which was compatible with the, I think I have it here which was compatible with the DS, the original DS. So this is all, you can get these really cheap as well. If you run an R4 flash cart, you can play just a bunch of DS games, but you can also play your Super Nintendo games, et cetera, et cetera, on that. It doesn't run quite as smooth as uh, as it probably would with the, the 3DS. The 3DS has built-in SNES emulation. It has, uh, it will run the DS games, which is a huge catalog natively. It'll run 3DS games. You can hack it and install RetroArch and it'll run a wide variety of emulators, particularly 16-bit and 8-bit emulators, um, which gives you access to a lot of those games on the go in a portable format that is very well protected. And fit, this is an XL, but it still fits in my pocket pretty nicely. Um, and if I put that, if I put an R4 cartridge in it, um, which basically is like an Evercart for the DS, uh, then I have access to like all of my DS games, which is another big collection I have that I could just use on the go. Now, the last one I'll talk about is probably my favorite of everything we talked about. You guys probably saw this one coming, which is the PlayStation Vita. To me, this is like the best piece of hardware for retro gaming, really, that I've ever had. Uh, and each month that passes, since they really since they discontinued this, I've loved this console more and more. This is not an original launch model, but you can get an OLED model. You can buy them from Japan between $1 and $200, which is um, a little bit pricey maybe for a lot of people. But if you think about what you're getting for it with an OLED screen, I might still buy an OLED because I just love the screens on them. They're beautiful. Um, and all of the unlockable options. It's not that hard to hack these. This one's a hacked one. And it really opens up the potential of what you have with your console. Um, so, you know, here's Final Fantasy VI, which I've been playing on stream. And it looks great on the Vita. It plays great. Um, it sounds pretty good, generally. Um, that's running through RetroArch. But you have full compatibility with the PS Vita for all PS Vita games. You have all PSP games. Uh, now you have to use digital versions of them, which means you have to buy them from the store or have you know a rip of them, a backup of them somehow. It will run uh, pretty much not 100% of PS1 games, but really high compatibility with PS1 games. Pretty much my entire catalog of PS1 games will run on this. Yes, you have to um, you have to rip them. You have to have a hack Vita to run Adrenaline, but you can run all your PS1 games um, that way. It's a couple of extra steps to to basically create this package that will run on here. But it runs the entire catalog of PS1 games. So on the go, you have PS1, PSP, PS Vita, plus all the games supported by RetroArch. Plus, this was from the era when Sony, like with the PS3, 
was very into backward compatibility and releasing back catalogs of games. So there's a large number of PS2 games that are ported to this you can buy. Um, like different, you know, God of War this, and, and uh, there's an Uncharted game for the PS Vita. So there's a lot of stuff that's been ported that we would now consider a retro or classic game that you could play on the PS Vita and you can still buy um, off of their store. There's a lot of games that have been kind of trapped on the PS Vita that have been slowly working their way um, onto other platforms over the years, but there's still a lot of good stuff available for the PS Vita that you can buy. The sticks work well. Everything on it works really good. It's really held up to a ton of play for me. I've been playing it uh, a lot over the last however many years that I've had it, and it's really held up. And I may get a second one just to, like, if the hardware starts to die on this one, I'll hack that one, I'll set that one up, get an OLED going with that one, and continue to use that one. So this one to me is like my ultimate retro gaming device. It has uh, pretty much all the good games that I want to play from PS1, PS2, PS3, Super Nintendo. It can just do everything. It's just a fantastic system and it comes in this great form factor. Now you can get a phone. There are, they do make phones that come in a, in a form factor like this, um, but it's just so such a good form factor. It fits in your pocket. You put it in your jacket pocket. Uh, unlike the, this is technically portable. I'd have to be, I'd have to have quite a, I'd have to be wearing those like Janko jeans to put that in my pocket, you know, those, those jeans from the 90s. So that's, you know, the ultimate. And the last one I'll mention is possibly what you're watching this video on, which is your PC. The PC obviously can run pretty much any emulator and the most advanced emulators are going to run on PC, including ones that will emulate GameCube, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3 emulation, things like that. Um, and of course, it'll work with a wide variety of uh, controllers. I even plug my original SNES controller into, I have a little adapter, a little USB adapter. I can plug it in and I can play with my original SNES controller. I can play with this controller on my PC. So the PC is a great one. And there are a ton of games you can buy on Steam that are retro games. There's tons of PC abandonware that's out there. You could play the entire Marathon Trilogy basically for free um, because it's abandonware. That's one of Bungie's original 3D shooters from the 90s. You can get that uh, on the PC and it, they still hold up. It's still a pretty fun game and you could play with like HD textures and, and fun stuff like that. So the PC really is like an ultimate platform for retro gaming, but you're gonna have to do a little bit of searching, a little bit of work, a little bit of work to get all of that um, prepped up. And you can always hook your PC up to a TV if you want, um, if you want the TV experience. Indeed, you could even hook it up to a CRT if you're willing to do uh, that kind of work. So that's some great hardware that you can use to get into retro gaming. I will, uh, just on offhand, I'll mention that the Xbox Series X is actually a really good option for people that are looking into retro gaming and still wanna buy new hardware. If you can buy one, um, developer mode lets you run a bunch of different things, including emulators. So people are running emulators in developer mode on their Series X, including PlayStation 2 emulators, which is really cool. That means that you can run a huge catalog of games if you can run PS2 games. Plus Microsoft's been very um, supportive of backwards compatibility this this generation. So your Series X will run all your Series X games, pretty much all your Xbox One games, and a big portion of Xbox 360 games, uh, as well as original Xbox games. That's four generations of games that you can run on one system, um, going all the way back to the original Xbox, which had some tremendous titles, including one of my favorites, Knights of the Old Republic, but also like Ninja Gaiden. There's a ton of great games for the original Xbox. So that's also an option there too. The ultimate one's probably your PC because of just how open it is and the fact that the emulators have been running on x86 and x64 hardware at this point for 20 years. So it's pretty easy to get them running on your system as well. So thanks so much for watching and listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your favorite option for um, hardware for retro gaming. The last one, I guess I could tag this on. There's a bunch of little retro consoles that you can buy, little handheld ones that um, you can buy for $100 uh, thereabouts that basically run emulators. I don't have any of those because I can do all that with like the PS Vita and it has more options basically for the same price. Uh, so that's what I choose to go with. But those are also options if you're not wanting to buy or try to acquire like older an older PS Vita to run these games. You just kind of want something that works and you don't have to do any, any work for. There are those that are like those. And even some, you could buy hardware that runs older games. But like I said, the expensive part usually is buying the games, not the not the original systems. The systems tend to be 
pretty affordable. It's buying the games that, that gets expensive. So thanks so much, guys, and I will see you all next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can hop on my mailing list at dbspress.com slash list to be informed about my books and other endeavors that I put out. So thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.